Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. Today we keep learning Ethics of the Fathers, Pirkeavot, with Chapter 4, Mishnah 28. And uh, it says that Rabbi Elazar Hakapar says, Jealousy, lust, and glory remove a man from this world. So the commentaries explain that these three drives are, are insatiable. You could never uh, fill them up. The, the more you have of one of those, the more you're going to need. It's never going to be, a person never is going to be content or satisfied. Uh, if he has one million dollars in the bank, if he's greedy and he has lost, one million is not enough. He needs ten now. If he has ten, he needs a hundred. It's never going to be feeling for him. So he says here, uh, Rabbi Tversky from the book of Visions of the Fathers, that the, this, 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 this statement, the validity of this statement may not be fully appreciated by everyone. Because people sometimes are blind to their, their reality. They don't want to see it. They're, they're in denial. They think they can control things, but they can't. So, um, so he says here that he's reminded of a dialogue between Rabbi Shlomo Eger, a great 18th uh, century Talmudist, and his son, Rabbi Leib Eger. And Rabbi Leib Eger loved the Hasidic movement. And at this time in history, on the, uh, the 18th century, there was a lot of discrepancy between uh, the, the Litvaks and the Hasidim. Uh, there was a war going on. And um, because they didn't believe that the people were ready to learn the mystical part of the Torah. But nevertheless, his son, uh, Leib Eger, loved the Rabbi of Kotsk and he became a follower, follower, follower of the Rabbi of Kotsk. So Rabbi Shlomo, who thought, th thought Hasidim were not adequately diligent in the Talmud study, asked his son one day, what did you learn in Kosk? So Rabbi Leib, he had been in Kosk for a few months, and the father was asking him, what did you learn there? So Rabbi Leib answered, I learned that God rules the world. So the father laughed and he said, how can you go for two months, spend two months of your life with this, in Kosk to learn that God rules the world? Do you need to go there to know this? Like, don't you know it already? Even our housekeeper knows that. So he called her up and he said to her, tell me who rules the world? And she said, God, of course, God rules the world. So the son uh, answered him, uh, she, she, yes, father, she says, she says that God rules the world, but I know that God rules the world. So why is Rabbi Tversky giving us this anecdote? What is he trying to tell us here? Is that, yes, we read this Mishnah, we read what Rabbi Hakapar says, jealousy, lust, and glory remove a man from the world. We know this is true. We, 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 this is it. But do we really know it? Do we really internalize it? Do we really live by it? So, uh, uh, so people who recite the ethics of the fathers in, 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 on Shabbos and they may be learning this Mishnah online or they read it some, somewhere else, yes, it's a nice thing to think, it's a nice thing to read, but do we really appreciate it like Rabbi Leib Eger appreciated um, the concept of I know that God exists. I know this is a truth in, in life. So Rabbi Tversky, he is, um, he's a psychiatrist and he deals with a lot of addiction. He's very well known for this. He's, uh, he's worked with people for, I don't know, 40 years or more. And uh, he says that there's something interesting with dealing with uh, drug, drug addicts. And he says that the that in his times of training and treating uh, addicted people, uh, he encounters people who were destroying themselves and were harming other, their loved ones. And by pursuit of something that could never be satisfied. So uh, they destroy their lives, they destroy the life around them because they're looking for something that can never satisfy them. It's so sad. They will never find the peace they're looking for and they destroy their whole lives and the lives of those around them. So the more they try to satisfy the craving, the more intense it became. So this is, in, is a truth of, um, of all addictions. 
people who are addicted to food, people who are addicted to the phones, to the Facebook, to Instagrams, whatever is your addiction, God forbid, porn, all these addictions, drugs, alcohol, all these addictions are, are a craving that comes inside and even though you can eat a whole meal, you will never be satisfied. You're ready for the next one. So. So he says here that, uh, that the people who become addicted to alcohol or drugs embark on a pursuit of gratifying a pathological craving which can never be satisfied. And at the end it brings destruction and pain. And, uh, and this is true, he says, of jealousy, lust, and glory. It's the same thing, it's an addiction. When people are jealous, they'll be more jealous. When people are lost, have lost in them and greed, it can never be satisfied. When a person needs recognition and he's looking for honor, it's, it's insatiable. It's never gonna be uh, uh, filled up. So, so he says here that the problem here is that in general people cannot recognize this, this uh, problem they have inside of them, they cannot see it in themselves. They can see it in everybody else, but they don't see it in themselves. And they live in denial. That's the hardest thing to take away from an addict, is the denial. Once they can acknowledge and can, they can really see it and, and accept that they have that problem, then they can start working on themselves. But till then, it's impossible for a person to be able to correct himself. So he says here that there's a well-known anecdote about a man who was reciting the confessions on Erev Yom Kippur, uh, in which he was declaring his self-effacement and humility by reciting, I am nothing. And then next to him, on, on the right side, there was this guy who was known as a very humble man, very simple person, not presentious, a person that never really talked about anybody, he was never showing off anything, and he heard him saying the same prayer, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And then he turns to the guy on the left and he says, oh, look at this guy, what he's, what he's uh, boasting about. Like this from all of them. So the person that was greedy, that was um, uh, arrogant, he couldn't see it on himself, but he saw it on his next door neighbor who was the, the opposite of it, but he saw it in him. But it's not because the person was like that, it's because he sees himself in everybody. So. So the, 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 his verbalization of humility was lip service and what not decreased his vanity and feeling of superiority over others, even one yota. So we see that when he was doing this prayer, it really was lip service. He was not really correcting himself. And, um, and Rabbi Tversky says here something very important is that this yeshus, this arrogance, this bad midot, that creates all these problems uh, really comes from a lack of a healthy self-esteem. So the root of the problem really is that a person doesn't feel that, that he's important. He doesn't feel th that he's worthy. So when a person that has no healthy self-esteem, that's when he falls into jealousy, lust, and, and, and need of honor. And, um, and in drugs and addictions. So a healthy self-esteem based on a true self-awareness is a sense of purpose in life and a behavior which is directed towards fulfilling that purpose may keep a person in this world. So a person who knows his good character traits, he know, knows what he's good for, he knows that he's here for a purpose, he knows he has a mission, he knows what he, like if he's rich, he knows that Hashem needs him to help other people and he's working on that, then this is a person that is gonna be in this world because he has, he, his head is where it has to be. It's not about him anymore, it's about Hashem. So the, there are numerous passages in the Talmud where sages who lived very, very long lives were asked, how do you merit such longevity? Longe, longe, longe and the answer was, uh, that they describe how they pursue their goal in life. The, the answers varied, but at the end of the day, all of them had a sense of purpose. So this is the most precious gift you can give to your children, really. In this age in which these four kids, this generation is confronted with so many uh, challenges on addictions, because it's like humongous, 
uh, this generation needs to know that they are here for a reason. That this is the biggest gift you can give your kid, is to teach him that he is worthy, that he's loved, that Hashem made him because he needs him, and that he has something very special to give to the world, and that he should live for that. And when a person knows that, really knows it, not that, not lip service, but knows that truth, then he's gonna be in this world. He's not gonna be taken out of this world. So we know from here that uh, that we have to be very careful about all these uh, all these uh, uh, character, these midot that are negative. We have to really be very aware of them and really go the other way and uh, live a, an existence in which we are dedicated to bettering the world because that's why we're all here. Each person here has a different way of making it better. If you look at the world, there's gardeners, there's construction workers, there's electricians, the plumbers, there's the, there's the people, the roofers, there's all these people who are constructing the, 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 the world around us, the material world, and they're making it better. But in, 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 in our life, in our, in our spiritual way, we also have to make the world better. It's not enough the edifices and the gardens. We have to build this inside also in a, in a spiritual way. How do we do that? By being kind to people, by speaking nice, learning how to speak nice, change our... I, I hear in the street so many people saying so, so... They speak and every two words something horrible comes out of the mouth. Just refine yourself, make yourself a holy person. And always look in front of you, what is there for me to do that can make this world a better place? Maybe give a coffee on a cold day to a homeless person. Maybe say a kind word to someone that looks sad. Maybe sit down and do some healing for someone that is sick. Really, it's not huge, it's little things. It's little things. And these things really, for sure, are not only going to satisfy us, but are going to keep us in this world. So I wish you a blessed week and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.